the number of people who can survive on six hours of sleep or less without showing any impairment rounded to a whole number and expressed as a percent of the population is zero. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow, zero. Tämä kaveri on Matthew Walker, neurotieteiden ja psykologian professori, joka on tehnyt uransa unitutkijana. Hän oli Joe Roganin podcastissa vieraana ja oli kyllä niin tajuttoman hyvä jakso, että päätin tehdä tämmöisen lyhyen tiivistelmän suomeksi tekstitettyinä avainkohdista. Tämä ohjelmaformaatti ei ole mikään kovin vakava henkinen, vaan enemmänkin kavereiden välistä keskustelua, mutta se mitä tämä jakso sai mussa aikaan oli semmoisen innostuksen unta kohtaan ja Arvostuksen siitä, kuinka tärkeää se onkaan, vaikka monia asioita tiesinkin. Tykätkää videosta ja jakakaa sitä tärkeää sanomaa. Ja jos kiinnostuitte aiheesta, niin kannattaa kuunnella toi koko kahden tunnin podcast, ette tuhkautumaan sitä. Mutta tässä on mun poiminnat tästä jaksosta ja toivottavasti teki innostutte unesta samalla lailla kuin minä. Now how many hours of sleep should you get? Somewhere between seven to nine hours. Um, mm. Once you get below seven hours of sleep, we can measure objective impairments in your brain and your body. Your peak muscle strength, your physical vertical jump height, and your peak running speed, all of those things correlate with sleep. The less that you have, the worse those outcomes are. Probably one of the most surprising factors, though, was injury risk. When they've looked at athletes across a season and they've just plotted, you know, how frequently will they get injured? And it's a perfect linear relationship. The less sleep that you have, higher your injury risk. So people getting nine hours versus five hours, there was almost a 60% increase in probability of injury risk during a season. And we've done studies with motor skill learning, critical for athletic performance. Practice does not make perfect. Practice with a night of sleep is what makes perfect because you come back the next day and you're 20 to 30% better in terms of your skilled performance than where you were at the end of your practice session the day before. Wow. Wow. I mean, sleep is the greatest legal performance enhancing drug that most people are probably neglecting in sport. What do, you, what do you think the numbers are of sleep-deprived people in this country? So we know those numbers, actually. Um, almost one out of every two adults in America are not getting um, the recommended eight hours of sleep. Wow. Almost one out of every three people that you pass on the, sleep, uh, on the street are trying to survive on six hours of, or less of sleep. Um, back in 1942, Gallup did a poll. And what they found was that the average American adult was sleeping 7.9 hours of sleep a night. Now that number, most recently, is down to six hours and 31 minutes for the average adult during the week in America. That's the average, by the way. That means that there's a huge swath of people well below that average. Men who sleep five to six hours a night will have a level of testosterone, which is that of someone 10 years their senior. Hmm, so a lack of sleep will age you by a decade in terms of that wow. critical aspect of wellness, virility, you know, muscle strength, Ten sexual years. performance. years, that's you incredible. Know. You know, for example, if you're dieting, but you're not getting sufficient sleep, 70% of all the weight that you lose will come from lean body mass, muscle, and not fat. Your body becomes stingy in giving up its fat when it's underslept. So firstly, people who are sleeping just five to six hours a night will on average eat somewhere between 200 to 300 extra calories each day because of their underslept state. Add that up, it's about 70,000 extra calories a year. It's about 10 to 15 pounds of obese mass each year. Well, there was a study where they just took individuals and they just gave them four hours of sleep for one night. And what they saw was a 70% reduction in critical anti-cancer fighting immune cells. And after one night of four hours of sleep, that is a remarkable state of immune deficiency. And that's one of the reasons why insufficient sleep predicts cancer. Insufficient sleep across the lifespan now seems to be one of the most significant lifestyle factors determining whether or not you'll develop Alzheimer's. Margaret Thatcher and Ronald Reagan both were vociferous in their statement and their declaration of how little sleep that they would get. Both of them said four or five hours a night. And I think in part it was to paint this heroic ironclad status. Yeah. Sadly and tragically, Thatcher and Reagan both ended up getting Alzheimer's disease. 
you know. And we now know because of it's during deep sleep at night that there is a sewage system in the brain that kicks into high gear and it cleanses the brain of all of the metabolic toxins that have been built up throughout the day, this low level brain damage. And I don't think it's coincidental that both of them ended up progressing into a, tragically into a state of Alzheimer's disease. Insufficient sleep will even erode the very fabric of biological life itself, your DNA code. So in one study, they took a group of healthy adults and they limited them to six hours of sleep for one week. And they compared the profile of gene activity relative to when those same people were getting eight hours of sleep. And there were two critical results. The first was that a sizable 711 genes were distorted in their activity caused by one week of six hours of sleep, which is highly relevant by the way, because we know that many people are trying to survive on six hours of sleep during the week. Wow. The second sort of perhaps more interesting result was that about half of those genes were actually increased in their activity. The other half were actually suppressed. Those genes that were switched off by six hours of sleep for one week were genes related to your immune response, many of them. So you become immune deficient. Those genes that were increased or what we call overexpressed were genes that were related to the promotion of tumors genes that were related to long-term chronic inflammation within the body and genes that were associated with stress and as a consequence, cardiovascular disease. This is unbelievable. And the decimation of sleep throughout industrialized nations as a consequence is having a catastrophic impact on our health and our wellness and the safety and the education of our children. <sighs> Silent wow. sleep loss epidemic. We need to radically rethink the importance of sleep in education, in, in business, in the workplace, and in medicine too.